Hi, this is Rachel Mills with Making Crates Drawing Skills. Today we're going to be working on this sort of faux stained glass um, technique. Basically we're just going to be doing collage in the same sort of style as a medieval stained glass. So I always recommend looking at photos and things to get inspiration and to really understand the style. Like we can put some photos on screen for you so you can really look at the kind of colours they're using, the kind of shapes they're using. As you can see, there is these sort of um, the iron bits, the like soldered iron around the shapes. That's kind of what we're doing today. So the plan just use a piece of black paper if you have it. If you don't have a piece of black paper, absolutely fine. Just try to colour your own piece of paper. Um, if you have watercolours or paints and everything, I think that's going to get you some nicer coverage. If you do need to use pencil, that's absolutely fine. But yes, I actually don't have much colour paper besides my black paper. So I'm going to be using some white paper and watercolour to colour it. I also think that that's going to actually work really, really well because it's going to give more of that sort of lighted effect and some of that sort of light streaming through with the colour. So I'm starting with just my sketchbook over here and I'm going to sketch out my idea. We're going to do some actual thumbnails and everything today. So I also have in front of me, um, on my tablet over there, some pictures of um, medieval stained glass and everything so I can get some sort of ideas. So I might want to do some sort of person, because that seems to be a common motif. A lot of, um, a lot of medieval art and a lot of um, stained glass art, especially, is very, is very religious. So we have a lot of um, Christianity symbols. You don't have to do anything like that, but if you want to, you certainly can as well. I'm going to actually figure out a sort of shape for it to be kind of encompassed in. So I'm not just going to fill up my entire piece of black paper. I'm going to sort of do this sort of arch so that it will look like a proper window. So that sort of idea. And then I might do a sort of halo situation. And let me do a sort of figure. Now medieval art is quite stylized, but stylized in a very specific way. Yeah, I think I'll actually add a wee horse there. There we are. And Also, it is quite decorative, so I think I'm going to probably do some sort of edging things happening, sort of on the edges. These sort of like little dot details over there, and maybe I'll even do some sort of flowers and things. I think that'd be quite lovely. And I think I will draw it as sort of hood over there. Or maybe here. We'll see. So now I've got a sort of basic sketch over there. If you can see that. And then I'm going to plan it out a little bit better. Also, I don't like this. I could come over here again and say, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm going to do a circle instead. And then maybe I'll do a unicorn. Oh, I actually really like that idea. Then I could do some sort of flower things happening. Unicorns, I believe, were a symbol of Christ for 
quite a while, but we've kind of lost that symbolism. But it's still interesting to remember the historical symbolism. Let's see. And maybe some sort of wee bird or something. Because a lot of religious art is quite just ornate and everything and full of the symbolism and full of the sort of interactions and things and stories. So maybe the bird's coming to warn him of hunters or something. Make up a wee story like that. That would be quite good. So actually, I think I like that idea even better instead of the sort of just random saint on a horse. Although that is super duper medieval. So now... Or I could even try with this sort of format and then put the wee unicorn over there. And that would actually give room for his horn, which I quite like. And then I can do the sort of edge there. Yeah, okay. I think that's what the one I will go with. So that is why we do thumbnails. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try to figure out how I want to do this, what kind of shapes and everything I'm going to make. So the unicorn itself, hmm, I need to figure out exactly what kind of shape and everything I want to make for the unicorn. I'm going to look at a reference of a horse so that I can get an idea of how a medieval person would have drawn a horse. I'm not going to get too detailed actually, I might have just gotten a little bit too detailed right there. But I think I'm going to go for the classic um, like lion-tailed unicorn, which is quite fun. And maybe give my unicorn a little beard and everything as well. I think those unicorns look extra medieval, actually. Do a wee bird up here, perhaps. Then I'll put some leaves and maybe some fruits, actually. That'd be quite nice. to do. Alrighty. And then I could do sorts of like little details and things in there. So I'm going to start how I figure that out. I'm going to do there. I also might want to separate him a little bit more. Don't exaggerate things. I think I actually could have done a much better job of making him look properly medieval. I don't think he looks as medieval as he could. Might want to add maybe even just a little medieval mouth. And that will help. Honestly, mouth helps a lot. You'd be shocked. There we go. 
I'm whispering there. I thought the little bird should have a little human-like eye and a little human-like mouth because a lot of medieval animals and everything have this sort of human look in a way. It's quite interesting. So now that I have my piece of black paper, I'm going to kind of figure out where my arch should be. And with pencil, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see it in person. Maybe kind of see. Actually, let me turn this light. Okay, that helps a lot. Sorry, I didn't turn the light on. You can kind of see the um, line there. And I can just draw out how I want my arch to look. I'm going to try to make it look as um, like man-made as possible and as precise as possible. That will help things out a lot. And give it just a bit of border. So that way it'll look like it's sitting in the actual church wall. And it just... There we go. It's not as precise as it should be. But it will do. So now... I'm going to grab a piece of white paper, which I can later colour, and I'm going to draw out my unicorn and kind of figure out how big it needs to be as well. So holding this over here, just saying, okay, I want my unicorn. If I split my arch in half, and there's sort of this section as well, that's how big my unicorn needs to be. So if we look over here, that's kind of where my unicorn ends. Over here is where my kind of unicorn's top is. So now the unicorn can trace it now over here and over to the very edge. So from there to there will roughly be the unicorn, although it's a bit wider than that. Again, I can look at he's just over there and he's just over there. So There we go, and there we go. So now we'll hold that there. Yep. This lines up there, and this lines up there. So it looks like I've got a sort of perfect wee block to draw my unicorn in. I can have my reference, my sketch over there to look at. I'm also going to look at more um, medieval horses and stuff, so I can try to get a really good. Really good reference. So there is this wee back there. Oh, didn't see any of that, sorry. Let's get a bit more light. There we go. So right now, I'm just really drawing the shape. So sort of unicorn is probably right like this, and then he's going to have this little knee there. And he's going to have his little cloven hooves. need a second. That isn't it. It's been a while since I've looked at a horse's leg. This will have to do. I would recommend highly looking at a horse's leg if you are drawing a horse or if you're drawing like a dog or a person. Most of the um, people in medieval art. There's a lot of people in medieval art, so a lot to reference. Now over here, I'm considering if I want his tail to be kind of up. Actually, I'm just going to do this. I 
might do something like that actually. And there we go. That will do as well. And now at this point, I'll be able to cut that out and glue it on my piece of black paper. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm right back. So here is my scissors. And I'm going to go over here. And cut around him. Now one thing that I'm not happy about right now is that you can see all these pencil marks. So we have two options actually on how to get rid of them. First actually, I'm going to cut around the unicorn roughly just to make things a little bit easier for myself. Because now I can kind of come in. Actually, there's not that many smaller bits, honestly, in um, stained glass art and everything, which is good. So there are a few bits, a lot of these kind of smaller bits you look at have actually been painted on. I'm looking at right now, actually, there's this picture of this horse and it has these um, fleur de lis, actually, that they're called, these little motifs. And they, they're on these little square panels and they're quite small but they've been painted on, they haven't been actually cut out and done in. Just like all the little tiny um, like eyes and like hairs and everything, they've been painted on top of the glass. So that's actually what we're going to do with our little faux stained glasses. We are going to be painting over top of them at some point. drawing over top of them even, just to sort of add the, those details that we wouldn't have added with um, more glass or more paper in this point, in this case. So now I'm actually almost done with this unicorn, which is great. Almost done. Again, I forgot that wee bit. You try to be patient with it if you can. It is a lot easier to come back and sort of trim up a little wee area. Like let's say, oh actually, let me just trim that little piece on his nose. There we go. I'll trim it. But it's so much better to come back and go trim that sort of thing than to actually I'm gonna round this as well. Um, and to take off too much, and I might have taken off too much there. Because otherwise you'll just be cutting and cutting and cutting away at it until you have nothing left. So it's so, 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 so much better to cut a little less. Alrighty. So that's that. There's our unicorn. So now if we put him on the paper, he has a sort of, ooh, here he is, unicorn effect. And I personally really enjoy him. But one problem is we have all these pencil marks. So one fix is to just flip him over. If we don't mind having our unicorn in this direction. 
and then we can just paste them down and then add in the pen marks where we actually want them to be, where we, we want them to be quite precise. We don't just want the sort of messy pencil marks on them. Or we can sit with an eraser and erase these. I think I'm actually gonna go with the kind of lazy way and just sort of flip them over. So one thing is that he's not gonna be facing the same direction as my, as my sketch now. One way to fix this, if you really want to just do the lazy way and flip them over, but still want him to be facing the same direction, would be to, when you draw him on the paper, where you were cutting him off from, would be to draw him facing the wrong way. Like drawing him like this, and then when you cut him off, out, you have all the sketch marks on this side, and you flip him over, and he'll be nice and clean. So those are a few options there for you. So we're going to paste him on, and you yourself would probably cut out a lot more elements, but I'm going to kind of skip a little bit just so we can, just so I can show you all the things that we can do. So I'll be right back. One moment. All right, so I'm back with some glue. Um, if you have a glue stick, that would actually be great to use, but I cannot find mine. So I'm just gonna be using some PVA glue. I'm putting a bit on him. I don't want really, I really don't want to go overboard. If you have a paintbrush, that can be a great option of spreading your glue around. Another option could even be your fingers. But I think I'll just use my paintbrush just to save my fingers for now. Because I'd highly recommend washing your hands after using your fingers to spread the glue. So there we go. I don't have that that much on it and that's kind of a good way to go. I actually shouldn't be applying the glue on my nice black layer. I should use like a piece of scrap paper or something. Let me just... There we are. There we are, a piece of the paper that I used to to be unicorn. Here we go. So that's that covered. So I move him over, decide where I want him to be. Move him over slightly and there he is. And I can do that for all the other sorts of pieces and things. Background pieces might be a little bit harder to do. but it can easily be done, especially with like little scraps and things. I can kind of come over here and maybe, hmm, let's see. Maybe do like this and this, and I can cut this off. So that fits somewhat snugly, but I can still see the gap. And then do, this. I think I'm actually going to do some trees, which I did not sketch in, but I think they'll look quite nice. Yeah, there we go. And maybe he should fit a wee bit snugger. Now this bit I actually will have to erase. I'm going to grab my weed needed eraser here, just to sort of clean up the edge over here. see us wee bit. That might even be a little much. And if you are using a brush, just be careful that it doesn't dry out. You don't want to kill all your brushes with glue. There we go. Now I'm going to... Okay, so neither has to be. I'm actually going to use this as almost like a ruler, like a straight edge to say okay. That's where one has to go now, as well as over here, because I want the tree to continue. So now we've got this wee bit. this wee bit and yeah I think something like this should fit. Now remember 
always better to have to trim it slightly and to not do enough. That looks quite good. Maybe I'll trim it a wee bit. There we go, that's quite good. So, add the glue. There we are. I actually forgot to clean that um, graphite there, so I can always clean that up once it's dried. I've also got a little bit of glue that's kind of coming through, so I'm gonna try to avoid that. But if it happens, no big deal. I don't think you can even see it on camera. Only I can. But there we are. So far. So now that I've got that so far, I, I could keep going do all the like branches or branches and um, tree trunks and everything and like lay it all out and like really cover it and it'll look really cool. But I'm going to sort of move on to the next step so you guys can see. So I'm not just going to be spending all day working on my own wee piece. So... Here is my unicorn over here, and I'm going to, I brought in the pen right away, but actually I should start with a pencil to just lay out my placements. I'm going to try to give it a very medieval placement. I'm looking at a picture of a horse on screen right now. Hmm. This eyeball is kind of pointing this way. Very sort of medieval look. The source almost has like this sort of eyebrow situation, which is quite interesting. Medieval art is weird, but I appreciate it. And I hope you guys can too. So I have this very human-like expression, even has these little creases all around his eyes. Now I'm going to do this little nostrils and there we are and I'm gonna draw the little swirls on his horn and the way the cheek comes in there as well as the details on his ears. A little cross bit in his hoof. I'm actually going to draw, draw some fluff over top of his hoof a little. I don't know if you can see that actually. There we go. And I'm going to draw some sort of fluff bits coming through the tail. Hmm. Not quite sure how I feel about that, but it should be fine. So now, Draws mean. And because a unicorn is a bit of a mythical beast, I'm even going to bring his mane down a little bit further down his back because I actually have seen that and I think it's quite a cool look. That's just my own style choice. I'm going to. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'll do it like this. There we are. There, so now I've kind of added some details and things. I actually really like how the um, pencil is working on just the white. I'm actually really enjoying that. But. I probably should go in with the pen at some point. But before that, even though a unicorn is white, I think I want to kind of muck him up a little bit. 
so he looks like a proper piece of glass. Because even I'm looking right now at these sort of white panel pieces and they're not quite like that pure white and everything. So I do want to muck it up a teensy bit, which just with some watercolour. So I'm just going in with a nice big brush. I'm just kind of putting in just a little bit of colour. Putting things around my finger even at some places, just because... But I'm not putting it everywhere as well, because this is like the white colour. Like other colours I do, I will put them everywhere. But because this is white, I don't want to muck it up too much. So there we are. And now I think for the trees, I'm going to go over this kind of greenish brown and see how that looks. Paper is terribly, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exorbent, so it's not really taking the watercolour that well. So you might want to use a paper that's going to take your watercolour a wee bit better. But that'll do for me. So I can also like add details and things and like little detail things on the trees as well. But remember to always look at the medieval, like um, the actual medieval stained glass, especially the photos that we'll show. You can pause the video on them and really take a look at them and have them in front of you while you're drawing. But use those as references, use those as your guides, and you're going to get something really amazing. I can't wait to see them all. Hope you're all well and safe. I'll see you soon. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Quick update actually on the piece. I've done these little bits around the edges. How I did that was I used a ruler to make a nice line down the paper and then I cut it and then I cut off little and then I cut off little bits from there so that they would all be a sort of uniform size and I'm going to do that again now and I have a little piece, the last wee piece from those to figure out exactly how wide it needs to be so that I don't have pieces of the wrong size. Also got um, some more details on the tree now to get a more tree look, because remember we coloured it, so now I let it dry and I've gone over top. I've also gone over top of the pen with the unicorn, because now I, the um, colour that I added there is dried as well. And that's what I've got. Really looking forward to seeing what you guys have. Alrighty, I think that's that.